It's now been over five years since President Obama signed into law the so-called Affordable Care Act, a sweeping health care overhaul that passed this chamber without a single Republican vote. While legislation as important as this should have been held to the highest standard and included broad bipartisan support, President Obama and then the 60 vote Congressional Democrats relied on fuzzy math and false promises to jam through this enormous, unwieldy health care measure that the American people overwhelmingly oppose. Such unilateral action has become President Obama's signature domestic policy legacy. But today, today, all that bullying and brinksmanship comes to a screeching halt. The legislation we'll vote on today takes a critical step forward in lifting the burden that Obamacare has placed on hardworking citizens across the country who have been saddled by rising premiums, increased health care costs, and reduced access to doctors and hospitals. It continues our long fight, our long fight to repeal this harmful law and build a bridge to health care solutions that work. Since Obamacare's enactment, Americans have been left wondering, what happened to all the promises? The promise to remove obstacles to obtaining coverage. The President's promise to reduce yearly premiums by up to 2,500 for a, quote, typical family. His promise to maintain existing providers. Remember, if you like your doctor, you can keep them. His promise to prevent any form of new tax increases. A promise to increase competition and provide greater choice. Despite all of the President's assurances, Obamacare has been full of empty promises that have made our nation's health care problems worse. One of the reasons why I voted against Obamacare was because despite being portrayed as affordable, there were numerous predictions that Americans across the country would be faced with increased health care costs. Guess what? Such predictions have become reality. Just as recently as this past summer, the President promised that under Obamacare, health insurance premium increases would be, quote, modest. This is despite the fact that state insurance regulators and actuaries were predicting the exact opposite outcome. Let's take a look at how modest these cost increases will be for my home state of Arizona. Data released last month by the Department of Health and Human Services shows that Americans enrolled in the federal marketplace will see an average premium increase of at least 7.5 percent for the second lowest so-called silver plans known as benchmark plans. In Arizona, 24 exchange plans will see double-digit rate heights, hikes in 2016. In Phoenix, premium, in premium increases are projected to stop 19 percent the highest average premium increase in my home state is projected to reach a whopping 78 percent. My constituents in Arizona call and write me daily, daily, begging and pleading that something be done to alleviate the financial hardship of Obamacare. Thomas from Flagstaff wrote me his monthly premiums jump from 200 a month to 600 a month. Jim, a resident of Arizona for 25 years, will soon pay an additional 160 per week. It goes on and on and on. Stories like these are unacceptable. While the President and my colleagues on the other side of the aisle continue to describe Obamacare as a success, families, patients, doctors, and small businesses across America continue to suffer from the disastrous effects of the President's failed health care law. Today, I am proud to once again stand with my Republican colleagues as we continue the fight to repeal and replace Obamacare. From the start, I oppose this sweeping scope of the health care law and proudly propose the first Republican amendment to Obamacare in 2009, which would have prevented the President from slashing Medicare by a half a trillion dollars. Since then, I've continued my efforts by sponsoring numerous other pieces of legislation that would lift the burden that has been placed on individuals and small businesses alike. Most recently, I introduced the Obamacare Opt-Out Act with Senator Barrasso, this Congress, which would give Americans the freedom to opt out of the individual mandate for health insurance coverage 
required by Obamacare. It is critical that we eliminate this costly mandate, which is estimated to cost Americans who decide not to enroll in Obamacare roughly $695 per adult and $347 per child in 2016 and even more in the years ahead. This legislation we will vote on today takes an even bigger step forward in freeing Americans from the harmful effects of this law. It provides relief to individuals and employers alike by eliminating costly penalties for those who fail to comply with Obamacare's mandate. It repeals draconian tax increases like the medical device tax and the Cadillac tax that have made health care more expensive and driven innovative companies to move critical operations and research and development overseas. It ensures Americans will not experience any disruption in their health care coverage by delaying the implementation date by two years, and most importantly, it gets the government out of the way and puts patients in charge on their health care decisions and needs. The fact is, we can repair, repeal and replace Obamacare with health care policies that work. For years, I have underscored common sense policy alternatives such as providing Americans with a direct refundable tax credit to help them pay for private health care, expanding the benefits of health savings accounts, passing medical liability reform, or quote, tort reform, extending the freedom to purchase health care across state lines. These are proposals that would provide immediate relief to Americans and all my fellow Arizonans who have been left to choose between buying groceries or paying for health insurance under Obamacare. Perhaps the greatest flaw in President Obama's health care law is that it has severely limited consumers' access to quality care. Today, limited access is now commonplace, costs are increasing, and government bureaucrats remain at the center of an individual's health care decisions. It's clear that any serious attempt to improve our health care system must begin with full repeal and replacement of Obamacare, a mission I remain fully committed to fighting on behalf of the people of Arizona. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this critically important bill today that will build a bridge from the President's broken promises to a better health care system for hardworking families in Arizona and across the country. I yield the floor.